Welcome to the Infinite Spark of Being podcast. My name is Keith Welsh, and in this episode, we are finally going to get back to chaos magic. But before we get into that, we are going to uh, discuss my website and how you can support me. Go there, theinfinitesparkofbeing.com, buy some t shirts, buy some tank tops, buy some hoodies, buy some books. Um, also, there is a Patreon there. Um, three tiers, $1 a month, $5 a month, $10 a month, or higher. If you feel that kind of love and appreciation, thank you so much. Um, The $10 and higher gets you to the first Wednesday of every month. There's an online gathering. Um, This month, it is on October 4th. We will be talking about pranayam and spinal breathing, which is a whole practice. Um, And uh, last month we did uh, meditation, just kind of discussed the method. We did a little group meditation. We'll do that again um, this month on October 4th. Uh, questions, comments, grill me, ask me anything there. It's, it's all good. It's good fun. Um, if you do not want to uh, subscribe to Patreon, you can always just pay $20 uh, for that. Uh, that will give you access. But you just pay me the 20 through Venmo or PayPal. Those links are there. If you feel like donating just one time to the podcast through those links, that's also appreciated. But be sure if you're um, if it's for the online gathering, be sure you send me an email address that I can send you the Google Meetup link to. What else? Oh, um, go to the Infinite Spark of Bean.com, Click about. And that is my one sheet. That is a brief history of me, uh, how I got here, what I'm up to. Um, If you are interested in some one-on-one time, uh, some of that thought transformation and restructuring stuff that's mentioned there, uh, reach out to me um, through email and we'll talk. Um, If you'd like me to come and speak, reach out to me through email and we'll talk. Um, Okay, I think that's it. All right. So I spoke about chaos magic briefly in the past. Um, It's something that a lot of you have asked me to revisit. Somebody recently was asking me to revisit it. So here we are. Um, This is going to reiterate a lot of the kind of stuff that I talk about. um, But really what we're seeking to do through these alternative means um, is to change our experience of being alive. Um, maybe you, sometimes it's not that like we're deeply traumatized and life is just so awful, but we have this inclination, this like feeling like there's something more, you know, I mentioned, I believe in the first or second episode of the podcast that I, as a kid, I had an interest in the unseen, you know, the invisible forces that kind of shape our world. Which, you know, paranormal stuff, God, you know, all of it. God, the most paranormal thing of all, uh, or extra normal, or however you want to put it. Um, and, you know, like a lot of people, my first adventure into uh, spirituality was an attempt to change my external world in such a way that, that I would enjoy it. And it took years before I realized that that isn't necessarily what I should be doing Uh, because the world is going to world right it's just that my internal experience needs to be altered and magic is a way that we did that uh, throughout history Um, whether it was shamans or religion or any of it it's all magical in that we are using these odd means to to change things, right? Um, So, all right, this is a very brief history or explanation, but you had right-hand path and left-hand path magic. You know, ceremonial magic, we'll just call it, right? And chaos magic was kind of like the punk rock version of magic, right? Like punk rock came out of like the rock and roll era or the, the stadium, you know, these 
like big bands and all these like really talented musicians that were really good at playing their instruments and then you had people that are like you know I don't have a lot of like musical talent but I have a lot I want to talk about and I feel drawn to express it musically and that's kind of the birth of punk rock um, punk rock was never a sound uh, though some people believe that um, punk rock punk was an idea um, it was a way of being with music it was a way of being in the world actually it was a way it was a response to the hippie era the disco era that you know a lot of the punks it's like you saw like this hippie movement kind of devolve into disco and then you have this just disaffected youth that was you know upset by the whole thing they felt let down they felt you know that they were lied to and so they you know the punk rock movement happened um chaos magic is like that it's like you're going to close these doors you're not going to let me into these secret ceremonies because like a lot of the right hand path or ceremonial magic was these like upper middle class rich kids that had time to like devote to I don't know fucking magical practice you know a really funny look at it is um, a podcast called last podcast on the left did a series on Aleister Crowley um, and he was obviously left hand path but and and not at all chaos but um, they have a really funny way of showing how like the, the you know the, the relationship between left hand and right hand path magic um, in some ways Buddhism is to Hinduism what chaos magic is to right hand path magic in that um, Buddha by a lot of people's belief to be an incarnation of Krishna or Vishnu um, a lot of people believe that Buddha or Krishna incarnated as Buddha in order to rid religion of these like kind of mundane goofy extravagant rituals and just go look let's just get to it what is this right like what are we trying to do here and in some ways he did so you look at Tibetan Buddhism and you're like wow this just got more complicated um so then some people believe that Krishna incarnated as Buddha to draw out the ignorant people away from religion which is really funny so it's this simplification of things and it's this chaos magic it's this everyman version of magic of right hand path magic because all magic really is all spirituality really is is this alteration to our internal world so that we experience the external world differently um, there will always be old age sickness and death there will always be the struggle of being in a human body but the way we relate to it is what is magical right now myself I am involved I'm engaged in a very um, very devoted to a certain like I would you know you could call it prayer you could call it magic you called a lot of things but I'm calling things into my life and it all came out of a big bump in the road for me and that's the best time to practice right when it seems chaotic and crazy you know um, I've mentioned this before that on paper things look one way but in reality in my experience they look another and um, you know I don't know if this will ever end I'll ever get to a place where then now I want to share what I've been doing so I'm like there's some I don't know if there's some sort of a goal that gets me to a place where it's like okay now I'm prepared to share it but I can say this I have been doing a lot of what you could call chaos magic you could even call it prayer right um, I mentioned this before in that episode on prayer that prayer is not asking it's telling right um if the universe or God or source is this infinitely abundant wellspring or fountainhead of creation and I am and it is omnipresent and I am inextricably connected to that thing 
then why can't I be calling what I want out of it, right? So what chaos magic is, is through various means, we influence our subconscious. Um, There's a really great book uh, called uh, The Game of Life and How to Play It. I believe it's a full title, like by Florence Scovel Shin. Um, I was listening to it yesterday on a very rainy walk in a weight vest that <laughs> turned into a some sort of small hurricane. Um, <laughs> but um, I've listened to this audiobook walking a million times. It's really good. It's very short. That's why I like, like the audiobook because you just put it on and it's like 45, 48 minutes or something. You take a walk and like you get the whole thing. And I very firmly believe in movement, bilateral stimulation while you're ingesting information. I believe that's very important. Um, Just saw a really funny shirt on somebody that reminds me of the Instagram story where I asked if anybody was interested in my politics. (laughs) Because the shirt said, don't tread on me, vote. And I just thought that was very interesting. Um... So with this chaos magic business, um, Floyd Scovel Shin was saying how there's the subconscious, obviously, operating system. She calls it like energy without direction, which is very interesting. It kind of is like an operating system is this basket that you would put things inside of like applications and software. Uh, She characterized the subconscious as like electricity or steam. It's just energy movement without direction the conscious mind she called uh, very carnal which is interesting because it is overly concerned with negativity bias threats adversaries danger things like that and like Neville Goddard said as she says as well which Floyd Scovel Shin is where a lot of these people got her their ideas from because she was born in like 1812 she died in 1925 I think she was born in 1812 or earlier. She, oh, this is a long time ago. But um, the uh, conscious mind, very concerned with danger and da-da-da-da-da. And we look at the East, the idea of the mind or the conscious mind being this thing that if it goes untrained, we kind of live in this state of fear. So through the meditative practice, through the reading of the Vedas or whatever your literature is, is you begin to inform the mind of new possibilities. And as we inform the mind of new possibilities, it impresses those possibilities onto the subconscious, the the engine, so that the subconscious begins to see these new, beautiful, positive things as the possibility rather than danger and and all that. Then she mentions the superconscious, which is she calls the divine mind which is the realm, I think she's the realm of high ideas. In the Vedas, and the Bhagavad Gita, when Krishna talks about the super soul, that piece of Krishna or Vishnu or Vishnu as the life-sustaining aspect of God, Vishnu as the sustainer, uh, Krishna incarnated as Vishnu, Krishna representing the supreme personality of Godhead, the supreme personality of God, that personality of Krishna is the supreme enjoyer, the playful one, as Gopala, right? Um, It's interesting because that realm of high ideas is Krishna, that piece of us, Krishna that lives inside of us, Vishnu that lives inside of us. So it's very interesting. So what she was... I found this connection yesterday. I was trying to put it into words. Maybe there'll be a whole episode on it, but the subconscious is Brahma. Shiva as the conscious mind. Vishnu as the uh, sustaining or high-minded super soul, super conscious, whatever. Um, So what we're doing through chaos magic is we are taking on rituals that we believe in things that we believe will influence our conscious mind in such a way that it begins thinking 
in these new terms, which then overwrites the what Florence Scovel Shin called the old derelicts of the past that lay within the subconscious that emerge out of the conscious mind that are very primal fears. You know, lack, scarcity, those things are very primal. Death, these things are all very primal. So what we're doing is we are impressing the subconscious through the conscious mind with new ideas that allow it to only seek out and to only find more beneficial, positive things. This is interesting because you'll have this like high idea, right? Like I'm very much going through this right now, though right now I've, the old derelicts are dying. It's very obvious because, so the, the, the high idea of I'm going to do this and this is going to be my life and this is what it's going to look like. And then the, the, the mind also goes, well, hold on. That's not possible. You can't do that. And here's why. And then that continues. And that being the old way of thinking has been feeding into the subconscious for so long where the subconscious just shows you this world of lack, right? Well, I've been so diligent in, in my affirmations and prayers, mantras, whatever you want to call it, that those old derelicts, as Scoville Shin says, as Florence says, those old derelicts, they come up and it's like they have no teeth anymore. They're just gumming at me, you know? They're like these toothless dogs that just, you know, and they don't, and they don't bite. They don't hold me anymore. Uh, these more higher ideas tend to uh, feel more real to me. And as I repeat certain affirmations three times a day, I start to notice moments where these affirmations are coming true, are becoming very real for me, and, I'm, and my mind is only seeing those possibilities. And it's not even conscious. I just look up and like, oh my God, I just did it. Oh my God, it's happening. Oh my God, it happened. Holy shit, so this is real. That's magic. You know, and I write about this in the new book that's not out yet, but it's that it's not our belief. It's not the, the ritual that is so powerful. It's not the chaos magic ritual. It's not the sigil that's so powerful. It's not the sacrifice that's so powerful. It's our belief in that thing that is so powerful. It's our belief in this ritual, which then brings it back to us that we are, that it's our juice, our mojo, our belief that is so powerful that pushes this thing forward. And that's very interesting to me. You know, that ultimately it's me. You know, um, I know the term calling into, calling in certain things comes up a lot. Calling in indicates that it was outside of you the whole time. I don't know. I don't know if I'm being, if I'm getting into semantics or not, but doesn't matter. Um, this is uh, this is all very interesting to me, and that's chaos magic. So, I mean, there's obvious rituals that people do, whether it's firing sigils with you know sex or orgasm or like on fire or whatever that thing is. There, there is, there's that, but there's also like these other ways of just. If, like, look, if my reality, if my world is my mind, right? That's what Lama Losan said to me. He said, you only experience the mind. This is, this is the mind. Then it goes back to that Joseph Campbell quote that I'm probably not going to get accurate, but something to the effect that all of the heavens and the hells are within you, right? He also says that God, your God, your higher power is a reflection of your own consciousness, so if you see God as something is outside of you, that power isn't within you, power is outside of you. So you have to go outside of yourself once again, you know, and that God is this vengeful, angry thing that you have to please. If, and that, 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 and that, that the God is outside of you, pleasure is outside of you, love is outside of you. Pain is always caused by something outside of you. Discomfort and discontentment is always out. Do you see the problem? But when, we re- that, when your consciousness is like that, but what if you become conscious of your own internal power? Right? The power within yourself. Right? 
um, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, the wise know me to be their own divine self. Then he mentions the super soul within you, right? Hanuman in the Ramayana says to Ram, when I forget who I am, I am your servant. When I remember who I am, I am you. It's very interesting, you know. So these rituals, you know, that's the thing about chaos magic. They mean a lot of different things. But Austin Spear, who was um, kind of not, I don't want to say the godfather of it. Maybe in some ways, I don't know. But, um, you know, there's made mention of like sigils and doing this and then doing that. And yeah, but there's also like, if it's chaos, then it's chaos magic, meaning that there is no ritual that you have to do. You create your own ritual. What feels right to you? You know, like, what do you need? What energy do you need to call on? It's interesting. Um, if you'd like to hear more about this, let me know if I, if there's something. So ask me, so this is something very important, you know, cause I don't think I cover everything every time. So when you have questions, if you send me the questions, I can then do an episode recapping things or expanding on something, you know? Um, and you guys have always sent me really good questions. So uh, that's it. Go to the infinite spark of bean.com, please. Buy t shirts, buy tank tops, buy hoodies, sign up for the Patreon. If you don't want to sign for Patreon, you can always donate. I won't kick you out of bed for eating crackers. Um, if you would like to participate in the, on the first Wednesday of every month online gathering, you can do that. Uh, by signing up Patreon for ten dollars a month, or a one-time twenty-dollar fee through, in, um, sorry, tell me Instagram, uh, PayPal or Venmo. Also, click the about if you'd like me to come speak, or uh, we can do that in person. We can do it through Zoom. If you'd like one on one time, reach out through there too. Uh, kind of get a taste of that. You can read on that about link. Uh, you can read about um, this uh, thought transformation and restructuring stuff. So anyway, all right, I'm gonna go. I'm going climbing. I love you. We've always been around each other. Now I'm reminding you. You used to remind me. I love you.